Yeah, good evening. Um, thanks for the opportunity to speak here. My name is Enda. I'm um, 30 years married to Audrey at the back of the room. And um, we've got four grown up children, ranging from 18 to 27 years of age. Um, I just want to tell the story about my eldest daughter, Rachel. Rachel, um, fantastic, beautiful, beautiful woman. So, um, Rachel went to school, went to college, and she had a boyfriend for about a year and a half. And that relationship, um, she ended that relationship quite a number of years ago. So, during her college years, she went on an internship to a multinational pharmaceutical company over in the west of Ireland, where she spent uh, six months living, living in the west. And we noticed during that time that she was starting to get panic attacks, anxiety. We just couldn't figure out where this was all coming from. And in natural fact, one day she was driving on the M6 and she got one of her panic attacks and an ambulance had to come and rescue her from, from her car. She was driving alone. So um, one evening she drove back from where she was in Sligo. Uh, she came home, which was quite unusual because she would only come home on weekends. So she came home this evening and sat in the kitchen and just said, Mom, Dad, I have something to tell you uh, that I'm gay. And she was shaken. She was crying. She was in control. Um, we hugged her and to feel your daughter under that stress, to see your daughter in such distress, is very distressing. Even thinking about it, it still, it still upsets me. And she kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I'm there, I said, wow, I mean, what are you sorry for? This is crazy. You know, we love you, we love you to bits, and you know, 100% acceptance within five seconds. It's not an issue. So then she sat down and spoke about it and said, you know, she lived in this bubble of anxiety, you know, of a feeling of, you know, a lack of self-worth, the feeling of living a lie. She couldn't talk about it. And that's what frightened me the most. I was so frightened by that, that your own child is like that. Your own child has to live through that, but didn't talk to you. What's more remarkable for me is that my eldest brother was gay. My eldest brother was 62 years of age, Brendan. And Rachel, my daughter, knows Brendan so well, loves him, they get on great. And she knows that, you know, I you know, have had a touching point with the gay community for many, many years. And still, she felt this unease, and she felt her unease was, what are my friends going to think? What are our family going to think? What are Nana and Granda and Granny going to think? And I just said, listen, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they think. And obviously, they're all absolutely 100%, 100% perfectly right. But that's what scared me, is that Rachel was brought up with a, you know, obviously a very close relationship with her mom and dad, and with a dad who has a gay brother, a wonderful, wonderful guy. And you actually know him. Yeah, but he was in Castle. He was in Castle. Actually, I don't talk about that. So, well, I was in Castle as well. But um, you know, like it was the fact that she found that so difficult to open up to her parents, and that frightens me. Is that wow? What must be like? feel that stigma and because we would have been obviously more attuned and we would have she knew she was going to come into our loving arms whenever she wanted to tell them or whenever she had to tell them and that's the part that makes me scared so I spoke to Rachel last night and I was saying Rachel do you think that within the gay community that there are people who have not yet spoken to their parents, have not yet spoken to their family, and she said, absolutely. And it's that, that stigma.
statements that exist out there is frightening. And to my mind, this referendum is so, so important that this is a big step up the ladder. I think to have the media coverage we have now is fantastic. The discussion is out there. The referendum is going to pass. But would it, I don't think anybody can do can replace that. Because it would be fantastic if it was a referendum that passed by more than 15.5%. Get it to 60%, get it to 70%. And to get the message out there, and to get a greater and greater acceptance. It's been a slow, arduous process. I know I spoke to my brother as well today. My brother lives in Cape Town. And he emigrated in 1973. And he emigrated because he couldn't live in Ireland as a gay man. The two words he used to me were the isolation and the marginalization. And he said, they're overwhelming dark forces. And he just couldn't live with it. And he started to get depressed. He realized, you know, and it took 20 years subsequent to that before the decriminalization happened, which is a horrific word. It's horrific that we actually that word even had to exist, but it took 20 years. But Brendan left, he emigrated, and he's never come back. And he was telling me today that, I mean, he's, he's a very well-traveled person. So particularly when he travels to America, he meets so many Irish people of his age group, you know, within 10, 10 years or whatever young age, <coughs> all of whom emigrated for the exact same reason. And all these, what's happened, obviously a lot of power, powerful things have happened since, with the various acts we were up to. But this is the most important. To my mind, this brings the biggest step. And going back to my daughter, Rachel, Rachel, from that day that she spoke to us, she has blossomed, she has flourished. And she's found the love of her life. She found the love of her life um, a couple of years back. They are madly in love. And Marion is away. And when Rachel and Marion come to our house, you just see such intense love between two people. And it's the same with all of us. Except for Audrey and the cat. It's the same. It's getting back at your point. It's back on the board. That's what it's all about. And I know we need to introduce the captain. You mentioned <coughs> that I am I'm a musician. So I run a wedding music operation. So I played um, at hundreds and hundreds of weddings. I have a, a choir and I have a band. So obviously, more recently, I've been performing at same sex marriage. The first one that I did was in uh, June 2012. It was for two girls, Captain and Pauline. And I'll never forget that day. I was playing to the board, I had the singers there, and the door opened. Captain and Pauline walked in. And, you know, again, it's the same thing. The same love walked into the room. But what was so fantastic, particularly since Rachel had come out to us, this is my first experience of a same sex. Everybody's there. And it was a fantastic afternoon, it was a fantastic night as well. And um, I'm actually having a call in tomorrow as, as it happens, but like they're they're the only couple of all the hundreds of weddings, the only couple I've actually kept in touch with. But it's all about the same love. And Rachel said to me last night, she said, Dad, I don't want to get down my knees. Civil partnership. 